A question for you and I to consider today comes from a, an anonymous young man in South America, and it has to do with how to help uh, his girlfriend who has deep hurt inside, and this deep hurt negatively affects their relationship. Hmm. So uh, the, the background is uh, madly in love with, love with this girl. She loves me. However, there's strange stuff going on. Uh, she'll only see me at her apartment with no one else around. She'll never want to go out with me. He said, after a while, it just seems so weird and strange to me. So I told her about how I feel about it. And she says, well, I'm afraid to be hurt. My dad died when I was nine. Mm. Uh, so our friend in South America continues, well, I understand that. She's afraid to be hurt again. But obviously her being afraid to be hurt negatively affects our relationship. And I feel a lot of pull in my heart about it. So how can I help her? Thank you. So the question for all of us, if you've ever been there, how can you help a wounded partner that you have? The, the, the opinion you won't want to hear, so mute your video right now, is there's nothing you can do. It is the most heartbreaking experience less to do with a lover who's not very psychologically available to us and more to do with the heartbreak of how helpless we are to help someone who we care about. They appear to be hurt, they appear to be wounded, and they appear to be incapable of helping themselves. What's more heartbreaking than, experience, than experiencing our own helplessness uh, helping someone we love uh, it's tough inside so the the writings on the wall here I don't even know what that saying means but I just said it uh, with what you've shared my friend your your girlfriend who when she was a nine-year-old little girl her father tragically dies obviously that's tough and obviously she's still a nine-year-old little girl not processing that pain. If she had processed the pain and the heartbreak of being a nine-year-old losing her father, then she would be more available to you. Uh, but what creates not only the fear, but the frozen fear of being able to love again is, uh, I, I, if I, I can't love I can't let someone get close to me because if I do, then they might leave me, death or otherwise. And if they leave me, then I would be hurt all over again. So what creates the frozen fear and inability to love again or be close and be affectionate is how we're still trying to, to deny the pain of the past. Now, this is not to criticize her. I can't say I blame her. It's very understandable why she is still so affected by her pain. So in a relationship, naturally, as she sees you as her boyfriend, another part of her also sees you as her surrogate father. Uh, and therefore, she has to deny you. Uh, dear boyfriend slash uh, daddy, don't get close to me because I had a father once who got really close to me and then he left me through death and that was trauma beyond trauma. So I'll be forever protecting myself from that happening again. If I have to kill myself by starving my heart from love in order to save myself, that's what I'll do, probably, says the wounded little girl inside of her. So, my friend, this is your girlfriend. She's on her journey, and we can hope and pray that in her time, and I'm sure you would say hopefully sooner rather than later, but all you can do is hope and pray that in her time, she comes to her own healing journey. 
I've had a lot of experience both in my professional life with clients and my personal life with girlfriends in my past trying to accelerate the process for them. Uh, it can't work. It, uh, and I, I wish I could be more opinionated by sounding more black and white. My experience is it just can't work. The most that will end up happening is she starts to resent you because you're trying to change her. You're trying to make her into someone different than who she is. You're trying to make her into a whole, happy, unwounded person. But who this girl is, is wounded. True love says, dearly beloved, I accept you as you are. If you're wounded, if you're cut in half from your past, and you'll be that way for another week, another lifetime, ten lifetimes, true love says, I accept you as you are. And that might be, that might mean you won't be nearly as available to me as I need you to be. And that might mean that I'll have to wake up and realize this relationship has to end. Or you might wake up and realize this relationship can continue, but we'll be well aware of how it will be as it continues. You'll always be guarded against me. And part of me will feel heartbroken about that. Hmm. Uh, this certainly is not an enthusiastic answer to uh, your question. It's really the only note of realism uh, that I can express, though. And, my friend, I would ask you, this uh, isn't all about her pain, so I would ask you to look deeper into your pain, uh, uh, how you like to become a rescuer uh, and rescue her. I mean, we just think about energetically what attracted you uh, to this lovely woman who's very hurt inside, hurt beyond you being able to do a thing about that. Uh, what from your past, perhaps, has you very attached to the energy of a wounded lady? So you might look in your past, past relationships with women, maybe family members, and consider when did I try and play the rescuer uh, with people in my life? And what was the pain I experienced about not being enough to rescue them? And is that pain being replicated here in this relationship? And I ask you to consider those introspective questions so that you don't lose yourself focusing on your girlfriend. Yes, she has a lot of issues, and they're her issues. And yes, you have a lot of your issues too. Uh, if you're willing to look at your half of this equation. Mm. So my friend, I wish you absolute uh, grace as you navigate the challenging waters of either being in this relationship, uh, as challenging as that is, or leaving this relationship, as challenging as this is. What I can guarantee you is your experiences of this relationship are creating a very rich life experience that your future self is looking at you for right now and saying, thank you for living through this challenging time. My life is richer today because of what we learn, not only in our head, but more so what we learn through the wisdom of our heart. So that might be true. I might just be sniffing crazy glue saying things like that. But nonetheless, friend in South America, thank you for the vulnerability of your heart, sharing your question, your thoughts, and I hope this helps even a little bit.